Uh, our next presenter, Lisa Vega from the New Mexico DOT. She'll be talking about New Mexico's in-house chip seal program. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lisa Vega. I'm the Assistant District Engineer for Construction for the New Mexico Department of Transportation in District 6. Today, I'll be talking about New Mexico's chip seal program and particularly our use of processed wrap in chip seals. New Mexico Department of Transportation is comprised of six districts. I work in District 6, which is in the northwest portion of New Mexico and is highlighted on the map. I currently manage our highway construction program, but however, I, I spent 10 years in maintenance before coming back to construction. And while I was in maintenance, I began a usage of the valuable resources of wrap. Start with a little bit of background. In District 6, we primarily use asphalt overlays or inlays and chip seals as our typical pavement preservation treatment. In my district, we maintain over 3,100 lane miles, mostly rural. We have 12 maintenance patrols and 40 district crews, one of which is our chip seal crew. We also have three area maintenance superintendents that oversee patrols and district crews by region. Approved aggregate sources are getting scarcer, and it is not uncommon for aggregate to be hauled 100 miles or more to a project. This adds cost to any project that requires the use of aggregate. That makes it even more important to utilize the wrap we have stockpiled in our right-of-way. For projects that require cold milling, we retain the majority of those millings, and we stockpile them within the NMDOT right-of-way. Because we had accumulated an excess amount of millings, we decided to begin experimenting with how we could use these millings. So we contracted with the University of New Mexico in 2013 to evaluate the best, most economical uses for, for wrap or millings. This study was completed in May 2017. The title of the study was Developing Statewide Standard Practices for the Use of Asphalt Millings for Maintenance Projects in New Mexico. From early findings of the study, the leading uses were chip seals and millings overlays. Trial sections of chip seals were placed in several rural roadways where virgin surface treatment aggregate or chips are typically hauled great distances and stockpiled for use. These trial sections included virgin materials and wrap materials, and we saw results that were more favorable with the wrap chip seals done with uh, processed wrap. The NMDOT primarily uses in-house crews to place our chip seals. Our District 6 chip seal crew consists of 17 people, including the supervisor, and annually we chip seal about 200 lane miles. Typically, whether it is virgin or wrap material, the surface treatment aggregate or chips are processed, hauled, and stockpiled at staging locations to be used in the upcoming season. Prior to the beginning of the season, pre-construction conference or a meeting is held to get everyone on the same page. And some of those items that we discuss are safety, calibration of the equipment, which is done every year. We also involve other support sections, such as our equipment section for the procedure when there are breakdowns, the maintenance patrols where the chip seals are, will occur. We depend on the patrol level personnel to uh, do traffic control, store our equipment, and other support that may need it. Traffic section to schedule both temporary and permanent striping, human resources for per diem and payroll questions, and the other area maintenance superintendents to ensure the support needed from their patrol personnel is provided. And lastly, they discuss the schedule for roads to be completed and total lane miles to be chip sealed that season. So prior to 2014, we bid contracts to crush surface treatment aggregate from virgin materials, and then we hauled and stockpiled those chips. In 2014, we bid a contract to have the existing stockpiled millings processed into surface treatment aggregate. The scope of the work included the contractor setting up at the existing milling stockpile, processing the millings into the required gradation, and hauling the material to the, pro the project staging locations. And then the resulting fines or waste that were left over were then restockpiled. So let me discuss in more detail our observations when using processed wrap for chip seals. We found that we didn't need to adjust the application rates for the wrap material. We could utilize the same application rates or lower them slightly when compared to virgin material. Typically, we use an application rate of 0 0.50 gallons per square yard. And of course that varies with every road. So they, what they do is they actually perform test strips to determine the best application rate. And what we observed was that the wrap chip seals have less chip loss. 
So what we think is the excess binder left on the aggregate actually helps the emulsion bind to the chip. Also, the processed wrap is not as dusty as the virgin material. The crew does not use as, a, as much water when using the wrap material, which is helpful considering the rural locations. Since 2014, we have continued to use processed wrap and our crews actually prefer the wrap chip material over the virgin aggregate. When I asked the chip seal supervisor his opinion on the wrap material, he told me that he loves Millings chips. He said, we get less waste when sweeping and they just seem to embed better. So they are also very pleasing to the eye. And if he, he, he said, if he could have it his way, that he, that would be all he would use. Here's a picture of a chip seal using process wrapped and virgin materials side by side. From the picture, you can see that the wrapped chip seals will generally have a darker surface color, which, is enhances, which enhances pavement marking contrast, which is a safety benefit. Also considering safety, our materials pavement evaluation unit compared the surface fr friction for both the wrap and the virgin chip seals. They measured similar skid resistance with the agency skid rig and therefore saw no difference. So when you also compare the prices between the wrap and virgin aggregate, the wrap aggregate was processed and delivered for approximately 58% of the cost of the virgin aggregate. So 2350 for wrap as compared to 4021 for virgin. And these costs are actually from the time of the study and I haven't recalculated them since then. Let me discuss the contracts that we've been advertising for processing the wrap. As I stated at the beginning of the presentation, this work consists of the contractor setting up at various existing milling stockpiles, processing it to the required gradation and hauling to locations designated in the plan set. We advertised the first project of this sort in 2014 and every project after that continues to be a learning experience. This is a picture of the cover sheet of that actual project. Here are a couple of pictures of the wrap being processed and stockpiled. We have seen the contractors use portable crushing and screening plants for this type of work. And as you can see, and I'm not sure if you can see, but in the back there, the loader is actually loading the wrap into the main bin. From there, the millings go into a deck. And I believe in this particular contract um, project, the contractor actually had two screens. And then you see the three conveyors there. So one is the quarter inch minus, which is what we consider the waste. One is the chips and the other is the oversized material. And then in the other picture is the loader stockpiling the material at the roadway where the uh, chips in-house chip seal crew will be utilizing that material at a later date. So when I first started in maintenance, which was probably in 20, 2007, I was given one budget to buy all the aggregate, the emulsion, and all the other materials needed for chip sealing. So right away, I noticed that we were limited on the amount that we could chip seal based solely on just that budget. So in 2010, we started advertising crushing projects to process surface treatment aggregate from virgin materials utilizing federal funds. This allowed me to expand my maintenance budget and chip sale more roads. That first project, we included all of the requirements in the plan set, which we refer to here in New Mexico as a book project. So in other words, the plan set included was included in the contract book. So each time we advertised the project, we'd learn a little bit something more, then we would incorporate that information into the next project. So then by 2014, we no longer did book projects and we actually developed a plan set in addition to a special provision. So we try to advertise the project every year. We've gotten better over time in getting these designed to advertise and the work completed in, in a good time frame to have this material available for the crew's use. We're actually ahead by a year now, and so that allows us a little more wiggle room for any issues that may arise during construction. So since that first one, we've definitely improved our contracts. And what I have pictured here is just page one of our special provision to produce surface treatment aggregate from department furnished wrap. So I'd also like to share a few lessons learned since we started. The first is it is best to know where your millings are coming from and to know what type of material it is. So is it super pave? Is it stone matrix graph vault? Is there a lot of patching or other maintenance material? For us, most of the milling stockpiles we processed came from Interstate 40 that runs through our district. So we knew the majority of those millings were super paved in OGFC. Second, sample 
failings and run gradations. From those gradations, you can compare to the required gradation, you will be better able to estimate the amount of waste you will see during processing. Most waste we experienced was 80% waste and 20% chips. On that particular project, the contractor did not have enough stockpiled material to produce the quantity we had in the plans. So of course, this resulted in a change order. The least waste we've seen is 40% waste and 60% chips but the majority comes about half and half. Third lesson learned was ensure the staging area is large enough to accommodate the contractor's equipment, including the trucks that will be used to haul the material and the processed wrap chips, as well as the waste material. So in conclusion, I believe wrap is a resource and with the aggregate sources becoming scarcer, we need to continue to utilize it. Like I mentioned, there will be waste when the process millings projects are complete. So while our maintenance forces have used the remaining fine fraction for shoulder stabilization and pipe bedding, we're still interested in figuring out the best way to utilize that material. Our in-house chip seal crews prefer chips processed from wrap. And lastly, from the research project we completed, we know the wrap chip seals perform the same but at a lower cost. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.